volunteer lifesaver is being pulled towards the reef. That clubby cannot even nearly get these three blokes in. But the man who claims to be OK is showing signs that he's far from it. Do I have a second board down here? I've got a couple of heads maybe in the south corner. I'd head down there. The clubbies are out there. A clubby was waving for help and he had two people on his board in trouble. Loaded with two people, the lifesaver is dangerously close to the reef. You've got a lot of swell pushing in there against the rocks and obviously the rip runs around the back of the iceberg, so you kind of get trapped between rocks and waves and it can be really tricky. Yeah, also, Harrison, just north of the club, he's just one bloke. He might need a hand as well. Could leave the volunteer lifesaver vulnerable to the reef. I have to prioritise who's drowning and who can keep themselves afloat for a bit longer. Reedy, where are you at, mate? Harrison's doing a rescue. I've got a clubby doing a double rescue behind the reef. Start heading down there. I went to the first guy who I thought was in more need of assistance. Hey, hey, come in. And he told me he was okay. <laughs> The volunteer lifesaver is being pulled towards the reef. That clubby cannot even nearly get these three blokes in. But the man who claims to be OK is showing signs that he's far from it. How to can't get this bloke in. With one of the buggies out of action, Reedy has 200 metres to cover on foot. Do I have a second board down here? I can see one right down south. I think, um, yeah, there's still a south board down there. Copy. Look that way. Harrison has found the between patients. The clubby had two patients. This other guy had no one with him. That's where I became un unstuck. Are you okay? He was in urgent need of help. So I knew I had to get him in as soon as I could because I need to go back out and grab these other guys. Managing two patients in tricky conditions has been gruelling work for the volunteer lifesaver. He would have been on that reef getting pounded by waves for at least 10 minutes now. The lifesaver is exhausted, but Harrison can only take one patient at a time. And that's when I look back and I notice Reedy is hurting out. Stuck in the south corner, he's short of breath. I was shook off, though. You always hear about people getting scared. I was like, ah, oh, it's nothing. Why are you actually out there? It's crazy. Myself and Harrison are in the Can Am on the, on the water's edge. Central to South Buggy Boys, just do us a favour and come up just in front of the tower. Beep. Unfortunately, we're, we're down a board rack. So, no rescue equipment. Earlier in the day, the rack on the buggy, which normally carries a rescue board, broke. Be reminded you a little bit quicker. When you're driving to a rescue, you kind of rely on the tower to let you know how severe or how urgent you should get there. Helpless to assist, the man's friend waves for a lifeguard. Yeah, definitely. You come in, you going in. Eddie reaches for a device which belongs to a much earlier era. Even though he wasn't too far from the beach, he was, he was struggling. That's what happens. They can't put their feet on the ground. They start to panic and a few waves come past their head and, and they think they're going to drown.
I actually tripped over. I thought I was going to headbutt the sand. I knew it was serious. I knew I had to get to him. Panicked swimmers can pull their rescuers under. Beardy leads with the rescue ship. Yeah, some of the boys that are only kind of here in the modern era, I'd say, like, is they wouldn't have done many tube rescues on Bondi. This is the first time I've ever seen a tube rescue at Bondi. Mate, this will be uh, hundreds of years' time. Lifeguards at Bondi look back in this moment, go, that guy, Daniel McLaughlin, Beardy, he rescued a guy at the tube. Felipe from Chile was standing on a sandbank when he was washed into deeper water. I found it hilarious. And I think when he saw me come out to get him, he was laughing at me too. Look at him. It's... <laughs> wow. It was actually pretty funny. I'm watching from north. I love a tube rescue. Mate, he's, he's nailed it. He's done well. The rescue may have been minor, but it's a momentous one for Beardy. The rescue buoy or tube was was probably came to fame in, in David Hasselhoff's hands, the Hoff. If the Hoff wants to copy me on the air guitar, I'll let him. Probably the worst situation of their life. They're screaming at you in other languages. You don't know what they're saying. They think they're going to die. And when they're back on terra firma, I suppose, they're uh, pretty happy. You want to you? That's all right. It's good to get a thank you here and now. Some people are embarrassed and walk away, and that's fine, but when they come and say thanks, it's pretty humbling. Sounds for a little serious, Go ahead. Uh, you just got a little flash going on to your south. Oh, it's just starting to uh, move out of the sea. We noticed there's two guys making an effort to get past the shore break. They don't really want to get hit by it, so they swim just beyond it. And Chapo's on the megaphone pulling everyone out of the water. There's a massive crowd. Hey, everyone in this area, come back to shore. He just has no idea of uh, his predicament at this stage. Yeah, copy, mate. It's too so dangerous. The waves make it hard for lifeguards on the sand to see how many patients need help. At that point, I only saw one guy, really, that I thought I was going to have to go for. I would say it's more than likely that you're going to have to go at some stage. I know how quickly the water's moving, that I have to go. Go, he needs some help. I have to jump in, run through, wait for a few waves on the shore break so I can get a clean run to get out to this guy. We must have been paddling out 100, 150 metres off the beach. Come on, mate, get out there. Lifeguards hope the swimmers aren't hit by a large wave before they reach them. These two men are out of luck. Oh, we got two. Yeah, we've got a second person waving for help. Oh, shit. Oh, this is bad. When the surf's up and we've got a busy beach, you know, you kind of want your mate to come out and, and back you up. We must have been 100, 150 metres off the beach. Hey, come on. Hold the board. And when I get there, there's two guys. And I'm like, whoa, I didn't even know there was two of them because I couldn't see from paddling out. This is really not good. Had to throw them both on the board, thinking to myself, we get cleaned up by a set. I'm going to lose one of these guys for sure. Maybe both of them, maybe the board, but... Turn around and Chapo's right there, which was pretty big relief for me. Oh, oh, oh. The patients are both students from Colombia. The danger may be over from there, but the flash rip has more havoc up its sleeve. Oh, I've got another couple of people in trouble too. A third person struggles 100 metres from shore. Oh, wow. This is a situation you don't want. Hey, buddy, come and hold on to this guy. I called a couple of local surfers over. Yeah, it's good. We've got, we've got help from the public going on down there. A volunteer surf lifesaver backs up. The tragedy has been averted. Mid morning. Trainee lifeguard Tommy monitors Bondi's single set of flags. Yeah, make sure you're up in between the red and yellow flags. 
I haven't done any rescues with 10 footers breaking on my head, so it was definitely a day where I was going to have to prove my worth. Yeah, this is broke in front. Hey, buddy, come straight back for sure. If you grow me long enough now, you can rip. Come straight back. <laughs> Tommy does everything he can to direct the man and avoid a rescue situation. Stop going sideways into the rip, Jeez. But his warnings go unheeded. This guy's trying to die. What can go wrong if it's that big is so much more than normally. Like, days this big, like, I could die. In the brief moments Tommy takes to paddle out, the man is sucked out towards the huge swell. So, yeah, I was very stern on get on the board and let's go. We've got to get out of here. They've got the tongue to get on the board. He's going to get sucked back out. So the north rip, when the waves are, you know, over eight feet, it starts to pull. It's like a river mouth that's just, it's full on. The rip charges out to sea at five metres per second. Double the speed of an Olympic swimmer. I just got to get across to the sandbank and get washed in as fast as possible. I don't want to be playing around in the reef getting taken out. Look how fast he's going back out to sea. Central to the north, he's going backwards pretty quick, didn't he? Tell me. <laughs> Tommy has three options. Paddle south and try to catch a wave in the impact zone. Go north up the rocks or aim straight at the beach and use brute strength against the rip. The lifeguard has their own way of doing things. I'm going to do the rescue different to what Tommy's going to do. I'm not going to try and paddle against the rip because you're just going to get sucked further and further out. Before long, the rip will pull Tommy and the man out into open water and into the full might of the impact zone. Just avoid sitting in the impact zone was, that was plan A. Plan B was, yeah. No, I didn't really have one actually. Let's go straight across, mate. Finally, Tommy paddles away from the centre of the grip to the edge of the impact zone. We should be right now. Eventually, we got a little wave all the way up the beach, so pretty happy with that as a success. So hats off to Tommy. It was most probably the hardest way to get the patient in, but he got the job done. We were just about to walk out the door, and I just spotted these two girls. These two younger girls, just in that little rift. Yeah, might just get down just really quickly. Oh, they're so young, they're so helpless. In time critical rescues, the lifeguard in the passenger seat goes first. Yeah, yeah. she's putting her hand up. Yeah, yeah. boy, his hand's gone up. But Jethro is only just returning to full duties after a dislocated shoulder. Since returning to work from my shoulder, it was the first time I've been in the buggy going flat stick, going going to a rescue where you know that it's life or death. Both hands up. I cleared that area out before I came off about 10 minutes ago. Go, go, go. There was a thought in the back of my head that like, this is the first time you're gonna paddle real hard. Go, go, go. These two girls weighs on Jethro's shoulders. I could see that they were youngish girls and the fear was in their eyes. They're both like crying, eh? They're little, they should have, I don't know where their mum or someone is. They were screaming for help when I was paddling out, so I, you just gotta go, you gotta go hard. They might not make it. earlier warnings from lifeguards. Because they're deaf. They looked at each other in a weird way as if like to acknowledge what was going on and they worked together as a team and yeah, never seen anything like it. The 
young girls are sisters. On shore, Harrison looks for their parents. If I could hear the screams 50 metres away on the beach, surely the parents could hear the screams. Is that the mum on the shore in the black shirt? The grandmother, she's dead. The grandmother has been trying to signal the girls for the last 10 minutes. She was on the water's edge helpless. She couldn't let anyone know that her kids are in trouble. She couldn't run up to us, you know. She just started doing sign language to me and I felt my heart sunk a bit, actually. 